It's 2.15 Eastern Standard Time. Daylight savings, whatnot. If you guys are all into it, then ladies and gentlemen, I'll get going. I know it's the end of the day. Long day, on your feet, seeing stuff, having a good time, and I'm the last one, so I'll do my best. But any, any nodding off and actions will be taken. And that goes vice versa. If you get really frustrated with me, just start pitching, not, pitching stuff up here. Not expensive stuff, okay? Let's keep it on the budget, but yeah. yeah. So, um, good afternoon. Uh, my name is Jamie Criswell. Uh, I'm a business development manager with Sennheiser Neumann. And we are going to discuss some wireless systems uh, and in one particular regard. Now, I can talk about wireless systems all day and all night and into the, the following day, right? So we're going to save you the trouble of that. Um, Although we're happy to discuss those things with you. Uh, but we're going to talk about wireless systems in one particular regard. And that is re uh, the regard of an ever more stringent and crowded RF space. Right Now, we've got a fairly small crowd here. And I would love it to be interactive. Right? That's just a hint. Okay, now the jokes aren't going to get good. No, not a professional. Do this, I do this for a reason, right? But if there are questions or comments or challenges, oh, this guy's full of it, then we're, we're, we're happy to hear it. We're ha I'm happy to hear it, right? Um, but we're going to talk about us a little bit, okay? Um, if you're not familiar, doesn't matter, I'm going to tell you anyway. So, anybody know what the word Sennheiser means? Anybody got a funny way of pronouncing it? It is a family name, yes. And our, our company was founded in that farmhouse in Hanover, Germany, just north of Hanover, Germany, in 1945. And the short story is uh, uh, Professor Fritz Sennheiser, uh, the, Allied, the invading Allied armies, had stored some equipment in that particular building, and he broke the lock and started, for all intents and purposes, messing around with it, and started to build things with those things. And that's how the company was founded. And if you get the chance to come to Hanover, come on by, OK? The company and the campus of the company is actually built around the existing farmhouse, still there, OK? That is a, one of our first products. And, you know, without going into all that detail, but it, it's kind of the, one of the products that, that made Sennheiser Sennheiser was a, was a set of headphones. And that's why I put that in there. But let's talk about some more recent history, right? Now, who here amongst the crowd is a frequent user of the wireless microphone technology? Somewhat. You even have, let's say, a wireless microphone problem. Right. Yeah. You know, but it's been an interesting few years, has it not? Okay. So uh, this is a little bit of history, but it is key to what we're discussing today. Uh, and it does look a little bit like this. Okay. Now, if you're not familiar, from 470 megahertz to 806, meg uh, 806 megahertz is what we call UHF. And that is the primary place in the spectrum of which wireless microphones operate. And for the longest time, our wireless microphone systems just had to fit in that particular space. Okay? But then we started transitioning to DTV. And that was a process. These frequencies are commodities. Okay, they are uh, regulated in a building not too far from where we're seated and standing right now by the FCC. Okay, and they determine what frequencies can be used by whom 
and for what purposes. And then any transmissions that you make on those frequencies can be of certain characteristics, width, power, so on and so forth. So this is a regulatory issue. So we start transitioning to digital television. And you can start to see some of the DTV start popping up in the spectrum that we use. So those are quite powerful signals. So that is going to render the operation of the wireless microphones ineffective. Or it doesn't work, would be the technical term. Because okay? you can't blare through that. Right? Then, by that time, we're in full digital, over-the-air transmissions are now all digital. And you can see, we also lost a good bit of spectrum. Okay, that's what we call the 700 megahertz or whatever. But that spectrum was then sold off for other uses. And it was sold off to a telecom. So we have two things going on here. One, we, don't, we no longer have analog television, we have digital television. So that's a six megabyte space that it takes up. And the FCC has sold off from 700 megahertz to 800 megahertz. So we can no longer use that. And that was more than a decade ago. So now, as operators, I mean, yes? There is, yeah. <laughs> yeah it, not really, but, it, my, but it's, it's a really good point. There's a public safety thing that was added that's actually really low in the spectrum. No. Oh, okay. The point here is this. When I'm trying to coordinate microphones, this is what I used to do. That's what I got 12 years ago. That's what I got. Okay? And, you know, uh, um, and this will change by Metro and so on and so forth. But, but nonetheless, you know, this is a much more serious situation than we had. Okay? So, even after that, 600 megahertz goes into this act from 600 to 700 megahertz. And that spectrum was sold again to mobile provider, another mobile provider, this one, T-Mobile. Not to mention any names, but T-Mobile. Okay, So uh, AT&T was the other one from 700 to 800. They own that. And now T-Mobile, in, in this time, and there's your public safety. Oh, okay, so it's sold it, to pay for yep. And then they kept the rest. Okay. <laughs> so now our spectrum is down another 100 megahertz. Okay. And, there, and that goes out into an incentive auction. So who's going to buy it? And actually, what wound up is that uh, T Mobile bought it. Okay. The fourth round, which is here which is what we are now. So now we're down to 614 megahertz, OK? 614 megahertz, and then there's something called the guard. So it's really 608 megahertz. And below is what's legal for the transmission of wireless microphones. But the other key thing to put in that understanding is that we have to share 470 megahertz to 608 megahertz with digital television. So if you recall all those digital TV spikes, they had to bug out a 600 plus as well. So that's now in our space. Okay. So if you can imagine kind of how crowded it, that it's starting to get. Uh, with and, and I'm not going to go into all of the details. There's the duplex gap and the guard bands. We actually did um, get some space back. It's actually legal to operate on a DTV channel now, which you can, you know, you, on the guards of the DTV. It wasn't legal before, but it is legal now. It's tricky biz. It's tricky business, but it, but it's it's still legal. And these were some of the small kind of thing concessions that were made to our industry. Uh, but nonetheless, this may be a surprise to you, but the mobile telecom industry, actually bigger than the professional audio industry. Who would have thought? Who would have thought? We thought we could outmuscle them 
and they flicked us off like so many gnats on the butt of elephants. And nonetheless, uh, uh, they did give us some good advice. They said, deal with it. Okay, so, um, right? But nonetheless, as a user or as a provider, you know, whether it's your, bus your business to coordinate audio for production or broadcast or live events or this or that or touring or whatever, this severely complicates how we go about rendering effective mic usage. No doubt about it. I've got an old saying, I have an old adage, I'm an old dude, right? So I got nothing fresh. Um, no one ever tells you, no one ever, has ever walked off a stage and handed you a mic and said, man, you guys did a great job, that was well coordinated, right? When's the, when's the only time you ever hear anything about a wireless mic? Wait, wait, what? Wait, wait. Yeah, sometimes, it, right? Then you're going to hear about it, right? <laughs> right? But nonetheless, um, you can see what we're dealing with and also appreciate the fact that this is wave propagation physics, right? It's not magic in any way. We don't use a magic spell to remove the wire, you know? It, it, and uh, so, so this is perfectly doable. But the way I like to transmit this idea, um, at least when people are trying to walk me off the edge, you know, when I can't take it anymore, but uh, 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 is that it, we just need more care, right? It, it, unfortunately, it used to be easier. We had more spectrum, we had more gear, you know, we could blare, more mellow, we could do all of these things. These things are still doable, we do it every day, right? If you drive around midtown Manhattan, where the Broadway theaters are, there's over 1,200 Sennheiser transmitters broadcasting in there of all those shows. So it's doable, right? But it can be a little bit of hard work, right? So what we're hopefully going to do as a manufacturer, as a provider, is, yeah, this is the doomsday slide, yeah. That's what the, uh, 312, that's what they wanted. This is what they wanted. They wanted to sell all the way down to channel 26. Oh, okay, so but nobody bought it. Oh. They auctioned it, and, and this is what was finally purchased. And it would be, and actually that amount of space would have been fine if we didn't have to share it with the digital television. You know, but we do, right? Especially, uh, you, know, if, uh, you know, let's say, is everyone kind of local? You got a major metro? A couple of major metros. You got Baltimore as well? Probably getting some, you know. Um, you know, you should see uh, LA. Uh, in Phoenix, no channels available. Zero channels. Miami, no channels are available. They, they were all moved into our space. Yeah. We could do a scan. I don't, I don't think it's too bad around here, but nonetheless, we, we need to. If we end up with frequencies that are close to DTVs, we need to, to take care. We need to, we need to do that. Uh, oh, doomsday, yeah. That's what it looks like now. Right around 2018 is when this happened. Right? And then maybe somebody came to you, maybe a salesperson, hey, you got 600 megahertz stuff, you're breaking the law, and you got to trade it out. And yeah, that was not our idea. <laughs> it was not. Um, but that's what, that's what we look like now. Yeah, that's what it look like now. So if you can compare it to where we started 20 years ago to where we, what we got to deal with now. Yeah? So that's presentation. Everybody have a good day. You know, stay positive. Love one another. Yeah, deal with it, man. Thank you, federal government. Okay, um, let's just grab a couple of uh, major metros, some of the bigger cities, right? And you can see, start to see where the channels have started to fill in. There in Chicago, look at Atlanta, New York City's not too bad. They did us a favor; they bunched them. They bunched them and left some room for us, so we could shove all those shows in there. But fairly typical. 
Yeah, that's fairly typical. And, and actually, you'd be looking at the future because the, the, the presentation is a little bit older. Um, this is before the spectrum. Okay, what do we do? What do we do? And no, quitting is not an option. I quit all the time. Chris, my colleague, says, no, you don't, and I have to go back to work. <laughs> okay, so you want some good news. Well, one, I'm stuck on the power supply. Okay, fix that. Um, as a wireless microphone manufacturer, that is the world's predominant wireless microphone manufacturer, we've done some stuff for you to help with us in the gear, okay? You just gotta turn it on, right? And I think we can get there. But, but for any of you who are looking to purchase or if you're looking at what's next, you know, anybody in the broadcast world or the theater world where they're, they're in constant usage, they don't last forever. What, what do we need to look at? What do we need to do? What kind of questions do I need to ask? Okay. First and foremost, a wide bandwidth. That gives me a lot of selection. A lot of frequencies available in the, in the receive and the transmit. But, and I can't emphasize this enough, filtering. It's got to have good filtering, has to have good filtering, right? And I'm going to show you why here in a second. How do you know? Well, someone should be able to tell you. How does it do it? Is it intermod free? It is. Is it equidistant grid? Is it? How does it do it? Okay. There's a number of ways to do it, but filtering is the best way to do that, okay? It provides good spectrum efficiency. Okay, big goofy looking guy, what in the world does that mean? We don't, it means exactly what we say. We don't have a lot of spectrum. So I need, full, I'm going to destroy someone else's Mac and they're not gonna let me leave. And I deserve that, okay. Well, I don't have a lot of spectrum. They, so the, the spectrum that I do use has got to be used efficiently. In other words, I need to have the full transmission, as much of the full transmission with a small amount of power. And I can't emphasize this enough. It's called carrier to noise or, or, or something like that. It's not signal to noise, okay? So no bum rush from the speaker guys, from the speaker people, right? <laughs> but carrier to noise, but it's exactly the same con concept. Right? And we'll take a look at a couple of, couple of those things to, to, to give you an idea. But it has to do it, it has to do it well. So even if I use smaller spectrum, it can't, if I drop it down in spectrum usage, it can't go all Hunger Games on me. It can't have bad range and bad sound and bad this and bad that. You know, just because it's more efficient, yeah, I'm connected, but the thing sounds awful, so why? why? You know, but this can be done. RF power selection is not a bad idea, although I put that in there because it's true. Um, um, but correct RF power is also very useful, e even though the equipment itself may decide that. Okay, but variances is in RF power can be a good way to do it, right? Digital or hybrid offers the most flexibility. Digital analog is still an option, right? Now, I, I know we're standing what, a half a mile from the nation's capital, and this is the most political statement of all times. All wireless is good, you know, right? Uh, but for the most part, what you're going to get now is digital wireless selections on new devices, right? I can guarantee you that many of you uh, have got a whole closet or show full of analog wireless. No doubt about it. Now, just for fun and to keep everybody awake, does digital make it all fine and make it good? Just put D on the box. It's good. Digital means good in Latin or something. I don't know. I was not a great student. I was a bad student. No, it does not. It, it, the construction of that equipment, whether it's analog or digital, matters very much. But digital does give us a whole bunch of tools. Digital gives us a whole bunch of tools in Kodak's and things of that nature that we didn't have with analog devices. So we can maybe combat some of this stuff.
Okay? Everybody good? Any questions? If I helped anybody, it's okay to lie to me. I'm fragile. I'm fragile. Okay? Now, with keeping those particular things in mind, I've already scared the hell out of you with the spectrum. Right? It's all part of my sinister plan. Right? Um, I'm going to talk about Sennheiser Wireless in a couple, and I'm going to talk about Sennheiser Wireless in regard to the concepts that I've already spoken about. Okay. So, um, right, this is EWDX, Evolution, Wirelo Evolution Wireless Digital X, and the X stands for, you know, the spot. Right, um, but nonetheless, uh, but that is to differentiate between some other products that we make. E Evolution Wireless Digital. Everybody familiar with Evolution Wireless? It's been out forever. It's really familiar with Evolution Wireless. <laughs> yeah, pretty common. You know, pretty common. Um, but this is kind of this is our latest in wireless offerings. Okay. Now, I'm going to pull out some of the things that I think are important. Okay, um, this is digital. Kodaks are the same. It's intermod free. Okay, intermodulation free. So, show of hands, who understands intermodulation? The guy from Sennheiser does. That's good. <laughs> good. All right. Okay. Specification number one when selecting a new wireless system is that it has got to be intermod free. I don't have the space. I don't have the space anymore for intermodulation. Okay? And I'm going to show you some intermodulation, and you're going to ask me how wireless systems ever worked with when this happens. Okay? Uh, it's got a low latency. It's got a very low latency. With a digital product, watch the latency because that can get problematic on you. But 1.9 is to less than 2 milliseconds. That's really good. Okay, uh, And then it operates at 10 milliwatts of RF output power. Okay, Now, why is this good? It's, that is low, which gives us partially the intermod free operation. Okay, The other way, OK, so it's this. The other way that you can accomplish that is with linearity of componentry. Intermod is essentially just RF components overloading, distorting. Okay? So if I make the components extremely linear, that helps with that problem at all. But, big goofy guy, you said the best way was intermod free. Intermod free, but how, what's the best way to get intermod free? Filtering. Filtering, right? So EWDX does not have that, but it still has intermod free, right? Anybody want to guess what the downside of filtering is? expensive. How expensive? Really expensive, right? So you've got a very, there's nothing on the screen, you've got a very doable price point for this level of professional operation. Okay, that's what we're providing here. So you can RF like the pros, sound like the pros, but not have the tag, just in case you don't have Hamilton money, which I don't. Okay, now, what does this look like? So we're going to make a mess of this. Two analogs, evolutions, two EWD axes. Notice how close the two carrier waves are to each other. So two channels is taking up that much room in analog. Two channels is taking up that much room or literally right next to each other. At the bottom, they're literally touching each other. So it can't get any closer. Right? So what's going to happen is my friend Michelle is going to put those two transmitters together. And notice I start to get some carriers. And look what happens when they touch. How much RF space is taken up by just two analog transmitters? That much. Right? Now we're going to do the same thing with an EWDX. And you'll notice what happens. Nothing. Nothing happens. 
okay? Because it's an equidistant grid device or an intermodulation free device. Now, let's, that was two. Keep in mind, remember how much of that RF space was taken up by those two analog transmitters that were producing intermod. But four is still a pretty small gig at four channels. You know what I mean? This is not a uh, Taylor Swift or something. You know, this is still a pretty everyday kind of gig. But notice, I've now doubled the amount of RF energy in that same space. And look at the space around it. It's completely clear. Let's do it with these transmitters. These are all unusable. All of this space is now not usable, yet I'm still only producing four carriers. Now, what happens if I need 16 carriers? That intermodulation effect is exponential. So 12 channels, you're actually trying to frequency coordinate over 1,000 nodes. Those are intermod products. Okay. But does that make those, that doesn't make those frequencies completely unusable as long as you've got it, more energy than what's in there? Ah, that's a really good question. Um, and the answer is it absolutely does. Yeah, it's too much energy because of the carrier to noise. Because remember, I have to have a whole signal to give you audio. And that's the problem. So in 800 megahertz days, what did we do to solve this problem? Spread them out. <laughs> Don't put them next to each other. You ever, anybody ever tell you that? Don't put the two channels next to each other. Well, that's why. That's why. The other thing is, is that it gets worse as the transmitters get in proximity to each other. Okay? So what if I'm a performer and I've got a microphone and I've got a guitar and I've got in-ear monitors, right? I'm creating that much intermodulation, just me. How about if I go with somebody, now we got a mess going on, right? And when we had tons of spectrum, didn't matter that much. We just move them, right? But we don't anymore. So that's exactly what I mean by spectral efficiency. It has to take the spectrum we have available and use it well, okay? Let's take just a real quick look on this. I don't want to dwell on this because this is not really a sales thing. But that's, what, that's a two-channel receiver in a half rack space. There's a bunch of feature sets, which is a good idea. It only requires two antennas for, for all four channels. Okay. Um, likewise, uh, this stuff is all available. And then we'll, uh, for any corp in the house, we've got Dante versions, Dante output versions of the devices. And we have a four channel version that we should see next year. Okay, and the, the glorious thing about this guy is that it does not require a splitter. It'll split 16 channels just by itself, right? So I can do 16 channels with two diversity antennas. Okay? Yep, you want to say it again? I don't have a ton of time, so I don't. Now, we're happy to go into details of all this kind of stuff. Yeah, but I just keep passing them through, okay? So we should see this guy next year. Uh, we've had a, a slight delay, and um, you know, it's been a kind of a weird world with chips and things, things like that. Okay, that's what the transmitters look like. We have them down on the table. If anybody wanna take a, uh, uh, but just a couple of things. Charging contacts on the outside, especially if you do house of worship, they love those things. Just drop the whole transmitter in the charger. Um, 12 hours of runtime, which is really good, okay? Um, and then a pack and a stick in Lima or 3.5, so whatever mic you want to use. You know, I recommend the Sennheiser mics, but that's up to you. Um, but likewise, we have a DP, which is a camera transmitter and receiver. So a portable receiver as well, that's one channel. And we're about to have an SKP or a plug-on transmitter. Should actually should have it by the end of the month. So what the takeaway is how EWDX is the best way for you to use this limited RF space without sacrificing the flexibility that you need for the job. 
because we never know what the job's going to be. Do I need this? Do I need that? Do I need this? Or the, um, what I think is highly important is the intelligibility and the sound quality of the channel, right? We are still transmitting audio, so it would be nice to hear it and hear it well and be excited by what we hear, right? So it's um, got a tabletop. Um, but due to time constraints, I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to roll on, right? Now, this is Digital 6000. So this is our professional. Remember when I said you go up to New York and it's 1,200 transmitters? These, these are the devices that they're using. This is where you can see some of them. And actually, the six performers actually have them right there in the picture. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, as of two days ago, all Cirque du Soleil touring productions are touring with Digital 6000, okay? And this kind of stuff, um, television, various broadcast, uh, those kind of are also utilizing, and you'll see it again, uh, on like the voice and the mass singer, TV's not my thing, but you know, but that, that's pretty, pretty common. Those are the devices that I'm about to speak to you about, okay? Now, um, First and foremost, this is the best of sound quality. Okay, so if if we they do wireless systems have a sound, and this is the best that you can do. Okay, has a lot to do with a bunch of stuff. I'm not going to bore you with. We have true bit diversity, right? Diversity to antennas. Once again, now we have a digital word, so we can do real time error correction. It's a fascinating thing. Um, and look what else we are. You know, it would be great if some big, tall, goofy looking guy came in and told us what that meant, right? Oh, wait a minute. You're already good to go, right? Um, now, but this is better intermodulation free operation because I'm no longer restricted to those 10 milliwatt output that I have in EWDX because the digital 6000 series of products utilizes inline filtration. So there's actually filters and circulators that take all of that intermod information and filter it out. Uh, and actually right here in this area, the Capital One Theater, they got a bunch of them. Yeah. Okay, this is what the devices look like. Okay, we've got the traditional handheld stick, right? And that's how you can tell. I know that all handheld transmitters on TV are black, you know, but if it looks like this, it's really good. If it doesn't look like that, it sounds, like, it sounds weird to me. Actually, you know, I'm turning this off. I don't like this at all. No, it's fine. But, it, but that's how you tell. The, sometimes you're lucky you can get a logo in the shop, but it's pretty rare. Right? A standard pack. This is a theatrical pack. It's a wonderful little device. It's about that big. There are no right angles, no corners. It's designed for Broadway because they put the packs in their wigs. So they need to be light and they need to be, can't dig in or they'll go, depending on what the character is wearing, maybe in here, maybe in a bra, in a, a lot of places that one, you don't want to dig into. Second of all, they could become cumbersome or uncomfortable for the performer, right? And you'll definitely hear about that, right? So this, I would highly encourage anyone to check out this pack. Battery's about that big, and it goes for 14 hours, okay? But all of the same characteristics. We have just the one receiver, a two-channel receiver that has, I gotta watch my time, okay. Okay, so how is this different? So you guys have been up here with me for a while, right? I know it seems like forever, that's usually what I get, that's what my wife tells me. Um, um, so you're old school at this, right? I got two carriers, right? Okay, and I got, what are these guys? Intermod nodes, right? And they're very, they're very powerful, okay? That's what a 6K transmission looks like. 200K and then two guards, okay? And the two guards are saying, hey, uh-uh, right? Now, what does it look like 
with some numbers. If we go up, the second, I don't really care. That's beyond UHF anyway. So I don't have anything that tunes in here. But look at the, the, the odd numbered ones, right? So with just this frequency, I'm likewise getting frequency at that and that where I cannot place additional frequencies. Now, digital 6000 transmitters will filter all of that out. So we just have the two freaks, right? Looks like that. Okay? It, it's, it does not. This, this is analog. Now, here's the two of them compared. Okay? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine channels. Nine channels of mics. That's the entire use spectrum for nine solid microphone uh, transmissions. Okay? If we do it with 6K, there's your noise floor. But you'll notice no, and someone was asking, are the intermod nodes low as long as I can get over them? Yeah, someone asked that, right? That's what they look like. That's what they look like when you, yeah, so no, there's, not, there's no getting over that. <laughs> you know, um, uh, that's what it looks like on a digital 6000. All I need is 250 to 300 kilohertz of space, and I can drop another channel effectively, right? Just, so that's actually the same space. And I didn't count them, but there's more, a lot more. Okay, now, how do we do it? Linearity, we already talked about. It's got something to do with this uh, guitar amp, right? But, I don't know, maybe there were some musicians or stuff, they, they kind of get lin linearity of parts. But EWDX and EWD uh, has the highest amount of linearity of RF componentry on the market. That how it is what it accomplishes. Digital 6000 likewise has high linearity componentry, but it also has isolators and circulators in that. So it's a fairly simple con concept, but uh, any studio workers back from back in the day, floating ground, you tie the ground to somewhere where it's not connected. I produced an entire CD in 1980 with my right as a bass player with my right pinky tied to the console because my bass was noisy. Okay? It's the same idea. Right? Take the, the noise floor and all of that and send it somewhere else. Right? And I don't remember exactly, but I believe there are 14 of those in line with every 6K channel split between the transmitter and the receiver. So the filtration makes it that much more effective. Then we can boost that transmission power. Okay? Now, so when you're looking at these things, what other concepts do I need to understand? Adjacent channel rejection. In other words, how hard does it keep away the signals that are not on the carrier? How, if I'm starting to drift, I'm starting to drift in, how much does it say, hey, go away? This is my, don't touch my carrier, right? 6K offers 100 dB. Of, of adjacent channel rejection. Okay, the sensitivity, how much? <clears throat> I'm sending a picture from the transmitter to the receiver, how big is it? Okay, that's the, uh, the RF specification of sensitivity, right? Minus 112 dB is what 6K is. On average, they're usually about 100. Upper 90s is typically what you see. And what does that mean is, what does it sound like? How much audio information can I get across before the air checking starts going nuts on it, okay? Now, the last one, because we're getting, we're getting there, and I know, I know I'm torturous, don't worry about it. Um, but nonetheless, you can, you're stuck, you're mine, um, is, I want you to pay, this one is not that well known. This is carrier to interference. And this is actually the spec I'm most proud of uh, for a couple of reasons. One, it's fantastic. Second of all, I get excited about things like this because I don't get out much. So, uh, it, but how much 
of that signal do I need so that I can reproduce the audio back to you fully? How much of a hit can that take? And I can still hear it, and it still sounds good. And I love this, it's 11 decibels. At 11 dB above, on average, 90 dB signal. I need 11 decibels to be able to give you the audio signal, to continue to give it the audio signal. That means with digital 6,000 devices, you can get yourself into a lot of trouble and still continue to produce, right? Okay, good? No, not so much? It's okay. Um, the other thing we can do, and I would encourage anyone, please contact us. I already told you, they don't let me go anywhere. I got nothing to do. But if you have questions, let us take care of this for you. Let us tell you this is what you need to do, okay? Splitters are your friend, okay? And I'm just about out of time, so I'm gonna leave it to splitters are your friend, okay? <laughs> right, right, I know, something else you gotta buy. Where does it go? How many little jumper BNCs you people are making me nuts? But nonetheless, a way to effectively utilize. If somebody comes to me and says, I got four channels, I'm starting to get some problems, right? We'll talk about your space a little bit, what you're doing a little bit. Are they bending the antennas? Because the talent will do that. They will, right? But the next thing out of my mouth is going to be, okay, do you have a splitter? Are you using the whip antennas that are on the back of the receivers? Or are we going to put some antennas out, right? So these kind of devices, even though they're not super fun to look at, right? No flashy lights. We need to put more flashy lights on them. Um, but nonetheless, they can really save your butt. Okay? And this is RF system design. Uh, and remember when I said before, this used to be easier because we could just move. Now we just have to take more care. And system design is right at the top. And um, trust me, not me, but we actually have smart people on staff. And I've seen them do some stuff. And we don't have time for it, but the story of the Lion King on Broadway. 82, six channels, 86 channels, four zones, because nobody sings from the stage. Good Lord. The antelope's got to sing from there, you know. Um, uh, you know, it took us four days to figure, figure it all out. So, it's, so we can do that. We can do your gig. <laughs> you got a lot of antelope. You got a lot, do you? <laughs> well, I, I don't care. I mean, have all the dang antelope and wildebeest you got. Just have them sing from the stage. <laughs> Yeah, come to, well, they sing from the lobby. <laughs> yeah, okay. That's a, you know, that's 64 channels. That's kind of what it looks like, right? And if anyone has a, a, anything of this nature and they want to contact us, this is what you'll get back. You know, this is what, you know, this is what you should do. Now, we're going to tell you what you should do, okay? And it's up to you to do that, <laughs> right? But we're happy to engage. Uh, the other thing is that n uh, nothing's, in concrete, you know, adjustments can be made. You know, those things need to happen, right? But there's also something called an antenna combiner. Now that's mainly, anybody in the broadcast studio world use a lot of these because you've got studio, studio, green room, studio, that, that kind of thing, and you need combiners to, to reduce the number of antennas, okay? Right, um, so I don't have much time for this, so this is gonna be really fast, but this is, just happens to be a gig that we did these are some of the parameters that we looked at and some of the coverage areas. Next thing was antenna placement. And, and the amazing thing is exactly how fast we did it. These guys are good, right? But this is what we ended up with, diverse, actually facing diverse. There were A and B facing each other, right? And then we got some low value coverage in the corridor because they just wanted to check signal strength and battery and not really get audio. And that's what it ended up kind of looking like. Then an equipment list of how we're going to do this and how it's going to be wired, okay? There's your wiring, wiring. And before anybody goes home, you should always have this. This is your frequency coordination seat. 
when you do a frequency coordination, and I'm not talking about scanning and they all work. I'm talking about doing an active frequency coordination, taking everything into account, getting scans inside and outside of the building so you know what the building is attenuating, is what we can get away with. But there's one key thing, and then I gotta move on. One key thing I wanna point out out is look at this. We'll give you, or you should get, the coordination, what you're not using, what you're not using. Do not take your system to the absolute limit. Leave some room for what might happen. If you're in broadcast or theater or any of those kind of things, guest musicians, oh, can I use my own ears? Oh, you know, that happens in the studios. A, a performer comes in, oh, I got my own mics, but all this kind of stuff. Grab your sheet and go, yeah, you're going here, 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 here and my system is left alone, right? So that's one of the key aspects of having a frequency coordination, and you know, that should be handed to you right before anybody leaves, okay? You know, once again, okay? Now, I am just about out of time. I have one more minute, right? Good, don't look at your phones and watches because I'm lying. That happens, I'm in sales. <laughs> if I'm not kissing a baby, I'm stealing its lollipop. Right? I don't know, I got that out of a movie. I have nothing original. Um, I, but I, I blazed through that pretty quickly, okay? We're happy to engage for more detail, your, cer your particular circumstances, what in the heck are you talking about, right? You know, all the way down to how do I hold the transmitter, <laughs> right? And believe it or not, there's a way to hold the transmitter, right? And good luck with your talent, but hey. It's nice to know. But we're happy to engage in all this kind of stuff. But I've talked to you about a few things. I've talked to you about the devices that we manufacture that, and the aspects of those devices to help with the spectrum problem. And everything that I've shown you is in use out there in some of the cruddiest RF conditions that, that you know, when you roll into Kansas City, it doesn't matter, the show goes on. Right, or the corporate gig in Vegas, or the broadcast gig in LA, or it doesn't matter, right? But that's what we have to do. So help allow us to construct things to make it that much easier, right? Because we absolutely will not sacrifice the performance of that device. It's gonna actually sound as good as it possibly can. But we looked at carriers, we looked at linearity, signal to noise, carrier to noise, and we looked at um, filtration. Right? And we all know what's best now. Right? So no filters, no go. Right? No, but, but certainly EWDX can, can satisfy a great number of those, those jobs. But there's a, there can be a delineation of what I should use when and where. And we're also happy. But what if there's another way? Okay? So the problem are carriers. I have a carrier frequency. One mic's at five, your mic's at 502, yours is at 517. Yours is at this, that, and the other, okay? So what if we just don't have those? Carriers are a problem. So I'm gonna introduce to you WMAS, okay? And for anyone who's curious, this information is on our website at the moment. What you will not see is a description of a product or anything of that nature, but simply of a technology, okay? And what this is, uh, you go to the Sennheiser website and, and look, look up WMAS. Some super smart people are talking about how this works. So in 30 seconds, on the left is traditional carrier wirelesses. On the right is a wideband or WMAS system. Okay, there are no carriers. So instead of, and I took this right from the website, Six megahertz of several narrowband systems on the left, and WMAS, which assigns time slots instead to fr fix frequencies. No, I need carriers for that. Now, the problem with WMAS is that you have to unwind everything you know about how these work. Something like that. So. Now, what's the good news is that I'm at the end of my presentation, okay? The bad news is, well, we're not gonna, you know, we're done. You guys gonna be okay, you know? No, um, I'm really lonely. No, uh, uh, it's, uh, 
with wideband audio transmission, that's all you get <laughs> for now. For now. But come see us again soon. Okay? Now, if you want to, we'll be around. We'll be around. Would there be more to talk about in April? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, we can catch up on the holidays, see how the, which different New Year's. No, seriously, folks, that's all you get. <laughs> you don't get any more. <laughs> but yeah, we're going to turn this thing upside down. Yep. Thank you. Well, th well, thanks for hanging. I know it's a long day, man. It's...